Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm Allison Carpenter, and I am the chair of the Traffic Enforcement Subgroup as part of the PPG. As you heard Marcia talk about, um, a lot of our work will come after we get the information from statistics, in particular regarding traffic stops and the police interaction with citizens. We anticipate there will be a, num a number of statistics coming out of that, a lot of data. We're going to look through all of that data, the conclusions uh, that can be made, whether we can calculate some different ratios and things like that uh, based on police interaction with the public, the sort of stops that are being done, the way that the stops unfold, what ultimately comes out of those stops, and see what kind of trends uh, are, are present there. Once we look at those trends, we'll see, we'll identify areas that seem to be problematic or um, concerning in any way. We're going to look at other police departments, studies that they've done, other sorts of methods that they've adapted in viewing the role of uh, traffic enforcement officers, and we'll compare all of that um, outside data as well as inside statistics to make recommendations for what Arlington Police can do specifically in the area of traffic enforcement. There's some real interest in, you know, will you be looking at the use of um, traffic surveillance tools and what, what, what does all of your work entail relative to the data? Um, so, I mean, of course, we live right outside D.C., so there's a lot of surveillance no matter where any of us are in the U.S. right now. So um, we, we will look into that and the role that that can play as an alternate to, um, you know, armed police stops or something like that. Um, I think Marcia did talk about a lot of the statistics that we'll be looking at. But part of our task is not just to look at data that's been crunched for us, but to ask the difficult questions of, you know, can we look at this sort of thing? Can we calculate a ratio based on who's getting stopped and then where those stops lead? Um, how many people do we ask, for example, to search? How many of those searches result in contraband and things like that? Um, I think Marcia said it, but what better data can we collect if it's not part of something that the Virginia DMV or the U.S. Census collects? What is a way that we can make that information accessible and stored so that we can run meaningful reports and things like that? I think there's also things such as looking at things at the macro level, which is department wide versus the micro level, which may be, you know, individual practices of a, of a certain um, police force or individuals or things like that. And so we're going to look not just at sort of the raw data or, or some st simple statistics that are calculated, but really looking at some complex um, ways that police interact with individuals, in particular how they interact with certain individuals and how that interaction occurs and, and takes place and where the disparities are in that area. Um, and, you know, I, th I know the legislative update um, is important. And so we're going to look at what the information we had was, what the new information is that's going to be required, and still where the gaps are and what we may be able to do to help fill in those gaps.